Hello everyone, Courtney Conover here coming to you from my yoga den with what I believe to be is um, the most important video, most important YouTube video I've done to date regarding um, natural hair. So this is the video in which I divulge everything that I use for um, my hair regimen. So I'm going to divide this video into two parts. The first part I'm going to just just tell you exactly what I do, okay? And then the second part I'm going to explain to you why I use the products I do. And um, the reason for this is because oftentimes when I was starting my natural hair journey two years ago, I would spend hours upon hours upon hours of watching all of these wonderful hair tutorials with all of these um, YouTubers and Instagram personalities with this beautiful curly hair that I lusted after so much. And I loved watching them wash their hair. It was like hair porn to me. Um, but it really didn't help me in terms of why they chose the products that they did. I know a lot of those um, videos were sponsored. Um, but I, at that time in my, in my hair journey, I really needed to be educated on why um, certain products perform the way they do. And um, looking back now, I have the expertise, or I guess the wisdom, I should say, of going through this journey for two years. So now I'm kind of looking back and kind of trying to create this video for those of you who are maybe just kind of at a crossroads. Maybe you've been at this for a while and maybe you haven't. Maybe you're just not quite understanding um, how things work. I know I didn't, and that's what I needed at the time. So I'm kind of using um, this platform as a way to create um, content for what I thought I needed at the time or what I knew I needed at the time. I just didn't know how to go about getting it. So um, first, um, none of the products that I'm going to mention today are sponsored or um, I did not receive any kind of compensation for the products that I'm going to share with you today. They were all purchased 100% with my own money. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, some information about my hair for those of you who are perhaps this is your first um, time watching one of my YouTube videos. I am two years natural, two years, um, two years exactly last week. So I'm about two years and um, a week or two. Um, so this is all of my hair from, um, I did not big chop, I did not big chop, but I did slowly cut and trim over time. So April 1st of this year, 2017, that was the last of my um, letting go of my scraggly, straight, damaged, horribly uncontrollable ends. So on my 40th birthday, April 1st, 2017, I cut the last of that. So um, this, I have quite a big, bit of shrinkage. So this is how long my hair actually is. And my shrinkage is crazy, but I embrace it. Um, so all of this hair is from um, the ends being from you know, grown in November of 2015 to the present. So just to give you an idea of um, how I got this way, um, I exclusively do wash and goes. I don't do twist outs, braid outs, anything like that. I have a four-year-old daughter who is also natural, so I care for two heads. Um, so I've just found that wash and goes have always worked for us. Um, I, I just, I adore them. I love them. They're easy. And um, this is an eight-day wash and go. I'm going to use my monitor and to fluff um, as a mirror. So this is my eighth day of this particular wash and go. I'll probably wash around day 10, day 11, um, you know, somewhere around there. Um, but one thing I wanted to kind of tell you as well is how I embarked on it, how and why I embarked on this journey, how I decided and why, most importantly, I decided to um, to embrace my natural curls. So if you go to CourtneyConover.com and if you go to um, and maybe well, my previous videos I've done, um, I did a, a hair, why I started going natural video. And you will see, um, actually on my blog, I'll just say CourtneyConover.com. I have photos paid up, um, uh, pictured of where I started. So I had near waist length hair that um, was not relaxed, um, but I was addicted to straightening my hair. So the number one reason why I decided to go natural was because um, my daughter um I've always allowed her hair to be curly and free and I want her, I wanted her, still do, um, but it, from her inception, I wanted her to embrace her hair and to think her hair was beautiful. I've always constantly told her that, but it dawned on me one day that she would probably think I was a liar because I did everything in my power to make my hair unlike hers. So if she's saying to me, or if I'm saying to her mommy, you know, or 
Kennedy, your hair is so gorgeous. And she's going to turn around and say, well, if you think my hair is so gorgeous, how can we straighten your hair? So I decided I had to walk the walk. So again, in November 2015, I decided to go natural. And my daughter was the first catalyst. That was the main thing. I that was, She always kept me from when times got rough. My my journey the first two years was, I don't want to say all of the first two years, but the first year was extremely rough. I never once considered quitting because I knew that I had to make this work for her. And I did see signs of progress relatively quickly. Um, on the other end, I had a lot of frustrations to balance that out too. But nonetheless, she was my number one catalyst. The, no, the second reason I decided to go natural was because, again, I was 38 at the time. I'm 40 now. I was 38 when I started on this journey. And I was 38 years old, and I felt I was kind of embarrassed by the fact that I did not know how to care for my natural hair. Meaning, if I was not armed with a blow dryer and flat iron and all these different you know, um, hair aids to make my hair straight, I would not know what to do. And that kind of um, it kind of bothered me a little bit. The hair I was 38 years old and didn't know how to deal, or not, I want to say deal, but just care for my natural hair. So that was number two. The third thing is, once I decided to go natural, okay, I was watching all these YouTube videos and um, buying up everything that I could, thinking, well, if I bought this brand, my hair would be different. If I bought this brand, my hair would be different. If I went to Sally's and spent $50 on X, 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 and Y, then my hair would be different. So in the beginning, my first year, I spent so much money on products. Well, the third thing that I wanted to accomplish um, when I became natural was I wanted to be able to not only manage my hair, not only care for my hair, not only allow my hair to be healthy, but I wanted to do so on the cheap. I wanted to be able to go to a drugstore, go to Walmart, go to CVS and just buy products off the shelf and not break the bank and have my hair look um, wonderful, at least in my eyes. So I wanted to get off this whole bandwagon of or this hamster wheel of buying all of these expensive salon grade super expensive products like I was just done with it, especially now that I had two um, curly heads to do mine and my daughter's. I just, I was overspending so much money on hair products. Um, when I was straightening my hair, I would spend upwards, I don't know, between 18 to up even as much as 30 bucks on serum, um, silicone serum that I would put on my hair to straighten it. And I'm not going to mention any salon brands. I mean, they were great. That's not the point. The point is I just, I knew that I, in order to keep my hair straight the way I wanted, I had to buy those really, really expensive products because I noticed that a lot of those kinds of products did not exist. There wasn't a drugstore counterpart to those straightening serums. They were non-chemical, um, but they were usually only found in, um, in expensive salon grade brands. And I was married to these products because I, I wanted my hair to be straight and I was married to that. So um, I decided that when I went natural, I wanted to be able to do so with just buying inexpensive products. I didn't want to um, be emptying my wallet out all the time. So my, again, my three main reasons why I went natural. My daughter um, wanted to learn how to care for my natural hair um, without straightening. And third was I wanted to be able to find products because, again, I just wanted to make it easy. I wanted to make it simple. So that brings me to where we are today. I am telling you, for everything that I show you today in terms of products, I spend $8.17. You don't believe me? I have created a little flow chart. So um, I don't know why I put the conditioner first. Um, I'm, I should start here. My first product, Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle Conditioner. It's $3.99 a bottle. One bottle probably lasts me, oh gosh, three months. So technically, you know, divide $3.99 by, you know, I don't know how many washes I do in, in three months. But so it's not like I use this whole bottle for one, one wash. So you can actually divide it. So it's actually less than that. So cost, so cost per use is way less than $3.99. My next product, VO5 Strawberry Moisture Milk Conditioner, 78 cents a bottle. Now, I do use the whole bottle because it's not a big bottle, and it's kind of like a, the consistency of that conditioner is kind of not watery, but it's not really super thick, so it's great for detangling. So I use a whole bottle, but 78 cents, who cares? So my third is my styler, which I use Wet Lime Extreme uh, Professional Styling Gel, which is alcohol-free. Um, all good ingredients. It is two dollars and ninety-four cents a jug, and my daughter and I both use this. So, 
I don't know, we probably go through these, I don't know, a month and a half, maybe two months for one big, huge jar. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over laryngitis, and I probably should have waited to do this video, but I couldn't wait. I really, really wanted to get this out to you. So, the grand total is $7.71. Live in Michigan, 6% sales tax, $8.17. There you have it. That is what I'm going to show you today. I'm not playing around. When I say I want to do my hair, I want quality good ingredients on the cheap. That's what I found. And again, this is what I'm about to show you is worth is, is the culmination of two years of trial and error because I don't see these products um, highlighted much in YouTube videos. In fact, like almost never. I'll get to that in the second part of the video. OK, so the first thing that I do. I divide my hair into four sections. I don't just go like this and just wash and condition my hair. That would just be crazy. I don't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. My hair tangles a lot, so I have to keep it divided. So what I do is I have four of these clips. I divide my hair into four sections. So I'll do like one section here, you know, clip it like this, one section in the back, clip it like that, and two on this side. Okay. So I have four of these sections to get in the shower. Next thing I do is I work section by section. So the first thing that I do is I start at the bottom. So let's say I'll start on this side here. So what I would do, so I'm just primping my hair again. So what I do is the first thing I do when I get in the shower again, I have the three sections. I'm again, I'm working at one section at a time. So the three sections are still clipped up. So I'm going to take down this section. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just put that portion under um, the stream of the shower head and I'm just going to squeeze and what I'm doing now is I'm getting all of the gel off my hair because it doesn't really make sense to me to add can to add shampoo on it um, when my 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 gel is actually like water soluble so it doesn't have silicones it um, it rinses pretty much clean so I just use all of that water just to squeeze and get all of the gel out and then I you then you I'll feel when my hair is naked meaning that there's no more gel on the hair that's when I start with my first product, this Trader Joe's Tea Tree Tingle Conditioner. So I'll, hmm, you know what, I pretty much just wash once. Sometimes if I feel like um, my hair is really dirty, I'll like wash, rinse out, and then apply a little bit more. But this is so good, a little dollop will do you. I maybe do like a dime, uh, maybe a nickel, maybe a quarter, size amount in the palm of my hand, <coughs> excuse me, per section. Really work into the scalp. Um, I tend to have like flaky scalp, so this is great for that. And this is one of the ingredients. Um, three, two of the ingredients are, excuse me, three: peppermint, tea tree, and eucalyptus. This smells divine. So really good on your scalp. <clears throat> um, I'll, again, I will explain why I use all this later. So I wash, rinse that out. Okay, all shampoo is gone. Next, I bring in my my um, my second product: Vo5 Moisture Milks. Um. <coughs> Excuse me, I hope I don't continue coughing. I apologize. Again, this laryngitis was no joke. Um, so next, I saturate my hair in this. So divide the sec this bottle into four sections. That's pretty much what I use. I use probably like, you know, a, a quarter on each section of hair. So then I saturate this with conditioner, and then I clip it back up, and then I work on the other, squeezing out the gel, shampooing, rinsing out the shampoo, put the conditioner in, ton of conditioner, clip it back up and work all the way around. So then when I'm all done, I'm going to have four sections clipped up full of conditioner. All right. And then that's when I shave and do all that other stuff. So to give my hair extra time to absorb um, that conditioner. One thing that is so important about the marriage between water and conditioner is conditioner is pretty much the pathway of allowing moisture to enter into your hair shaft. So load up that conditioner, load up that water. I know I've heard some stuff about people washing and rinsing the cold. I do exclusively hot. Hot lifts the cuticle. It works for me. Um, and I'm sorry. I just don't have the patience to do a cold shower. That's just ridiculous. I'm sorry if you can do that. That's great. I just know. Um, so I'll have all four sections saturated in conditioner. And then I will start... Um, the second part of rinsing that out kind of where I began. So I started here, right? So I'm going to unclip this again. The other three piece, uh, um, sections are still clipped up with the conditioner. I'll start with the, with the one where I started in the beginning and I'll, I really won't rinse all the conditioner out or maybe rinse out 
maybe 50 percent. I may get them out of scientists. I can't really quantify how much I rinse out, but just to let you know, there's still a ton of conditioner. So what I'm using when I take that that section out, that the section of your saturated conditioner, I'm going to fingle to tangle. I do not use any combs. I do not use any um, Denman brushes. None of that. I find that using your fingers to detangle, it's everything because I find that I don't pull my hair as much because I can kind of feel for any kind of knots or tangles and I can manipulate those knots and tangles in a way that a comb simply can't because you're holding on to the base of a comb. It's really hard for you to really tell how much you're yanking of your hair out, right? So finger to tangle with that ton of conditioner and, and I'm kind of putting my that section under the under the shower head as well. So in the portion of detangling, I probably rinse out about 50% of that conditioner. The rest of that conditioner will remain in my hair. I clip that portion back up, go over under here. Again, finger detangle this bottom section um, under the shower head. So again, 50% of the conditioner is getting rinsed out, 50% staying in, clip it back up, do the other two. All right, so now I'm out of the shower. <coughs> Another sip of lemon water here. Now I'm under the shower, out of the shower. Now I'm going to my little vanity in the bathroom. And if you saw my hair hacks, uh, tips and treats, I think that's the name of it, video I published around Halloween or uploaded, I should say, around Halloween, you'll remember this. This is my kids' toddler bib that they used to eat when they were toddlers. I don't throw anything away. I told you I am, I am frugal. So I put this behind me like this. And so now when I'm going to apply the gel and whatnot, I use this because it, it protects protects my clothes, protects. I'm only wearing like a tank top when I do this anyway, but still, I don't like to have water running all down my back and arms and all that. So I know that they have um, um, smocks or what do they call those things? Uh, capes, I guess, at Sally's, the professionals, capes that you know that you would get put on at a salon when they do your hair, where they dye your hair, whatever. You see what I'm using. I'm using my kid's toddler bib. Anyway, so I keep this on, okay? So the next step, this is the end. This is the end where I'm just applying the the, uh, the styler. So again, I've, I've, we stepped out of the shower. I've got the four sections clipped up in these claw clips with fit, that are already detangled, washed, cleansed, um, detangled with 50% of the conditioner. So I'm going to start like I, like I did in the shower. I'm going to start with this bottom section, right? So this section is clipped up. This section is clipped up. This bottom section is clipped, up, clipped up. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start at the bottom like I always do. I always start at the bottom. And I'm going to take this section out. And um, in the course of when I stepped out, and, and let me backtrack. When I, when I get out of the shower, I never wring or twist my hair. I don't get... My hair is still soaked, hence this this um, this little bib here. My hair is soaking wet. I want to. I, I never want to really allow my hair to dry. One thing that I've that found that works for me. I don't know if I have what is this like three C four A hair, um, ish somewhere in there. I don't think I have quite four C. I might have some four Bs in there. But one thing that I found for my particular texture of hair, it is best. My hair needs moisture, more so, I think, than even looser curl patterns. So one thing that I found that has been immensely beneficial for me is to apply my style or my gel with my hair soaking, soaking, soaking wet. So when I'm in the shower, and I told you right before I get out where I have the four sections clipped up with 50% conditioner, they're still very wet. Never once did I wring my, the water out or the conditioner out. I want my hair as wet as possible when I get out. So even in that time of me um, getting out and kind of drying myself off and all that, my hair was still somewhat dry. It's just soaking up all this water. Um, so what I do is I take one of these little spray bottles I get from Target. And I fill it up to about here with water, just plain water. And then I'll squirt, I don't know, like about this much of the conditioner that I'm using. So today it's this one, which is mostly this one. I, I use another, uh, I have other two conditioners and I'll tell you that at the end. But this is my favorite. This is my favorite. So um, whatever conditioner I, I, I conditioned and detangled with, I'm going to put, I don't know, about this much, I mean, like a heavy squirt inside there and shake it up. And guess what? This is my leave-in. I don't buy a leave-in, a separate, you know, regular conditioner, a detangling conditioner, and a leave-in. This is my leave-in. So I'm going to take out 
this bottom section and I'm going to apply more of this because again, I want this soaking wet, soaking wet. So I'm going to, you know, I don't need it to tangle, but I'm going to straighten it all out. And then I'm going to apply this, this wet line extreme gel. Okay. So this smells really, really good too. Um, it's a kind of thicker consistency gel. Actually, I think it's, I think it's a little thinner than say Eco Styler. Um, but it's, it's, I love the consistency, consistency, love everything about this. Um, I think it's got, it's got aloe vera alcohol free with uh, panthenol, which is, I believe it's a softening ingredient. Um, but again, alcohol free aloe vera, panthenol, no silicones, no alcohols. I am just, mwah, love this. So I'm going to just rake that through and leave it. So, um, and then I move on to the next section. But one thing I want to say is when I start applying my gel, now I do apply it in smaller sections. So let's just say, let me try to just show you really quick if I can do this. Excuse me for looking into the monitor, but I'm just going to try to show you exactly. So when I'm applying my, so let's just say this is that, this is this, this is the bottom um, right section. Okay, so this is all the hair that's in my bottom right section. When it gets time for me to apply the gel, I'm probably going to move into sections like this smaller sections right so i'm not just going to apply all the gel to all this this is still too much hair for me to apply that so i like to work in smaller sections to make sure that i have um that i that i've um do i have everything okay make sure that my part is all good i feel like is that the right way no it's the right way sorry um so i want to work in smaller sections to make sure that i get I'm heavy handed with the gel. I'm heavy. But again, this is $2.94, people. $2.94. You can afford to be heavy with $2.94 gel. So I am heavy. Again, I am just coating that gel in and then I leave it. Right. And I work on the whole section. So um, it takes me about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. If I'm watching TV on my phone, an hour um, to apply all of the gel. So when I'm done with that, um, then... What I do is I take this off. In step one of drying, I'm probably under my hooded dryer for about 40 minutes. My hairs are thick. I have a lot of hair too, so I'm under this dinosaur here. This thing is a. Oh, does it say here where it is? It's a. It's a um, golden hot. I think it does say it on the thing here. Oh, here it goes. Golden hot 1400. This baby is so old. I'm just waiting for it to kick it any one of these days, and I'm gonna buy like one of those. Um, nice, I don't know what they call it, ultrasonic, I don't know what they're called, um, dryers, but this thing works. I put this up on my vanity, and I have a little chair in my my kid's bathroom. My kid's bathroom is the bigger, biggest mirror in the house, so I use, I hijack their bathroom for that. And I stick that up, and then I have my yoga journals, and my direct TV on my phone, and I am just under this thing for about 40 minutes. Guess what, hair's still not dry. Hair is still not dry. My hair is just so thick and there's a lot of it. It's still not dry. So then what I do is I go through and this is with my diffuser. This is a Remington. Again, 20 bucks Walmart. I can't remember where I bought this one though. This wasn't that much. I think it got on a kind of clearance at Sally's. It was under 50 bucks though, I think, but this was years ago. This thing is, this is, oh, this is 10, this is over 10 years old. Um, but this one, um, I like this one because it came with this diffuser. Again, if you wanted to use this, I'm sure you could. I just wouldn't recommend using that nozzle that you use, that kind of like the nozzle that looks like a duck mouth. Um, that that concentrates the, the air too much, so you could incur more heat damage. Whereas if you're going to use a dryer like this at all to dry curly hair, I highly, highly, highly recommend using a diffuser. I don't know if you can see here. There are little holes in all these different nozzles, so definitely... It, again, it diffuses the air, so it's not just concentrated on one area. So um, the shell, the exterior of my hair will get dry from my from my hooded dryer. But what I'll need to do is I'll need to go back in in the roots. So I'm just going like this. So the roots of my hair will still be almost soaking wet, even after 45, 50 minutes under this thing. My roots are still wet. So I go in like this until it's all done. Now, mind you, when I get done... And then when I say done, me and my hair is dry. I wash my hair at night, so I get my hair is dry, then I go to bed. I don't go to bed with wet hair. Um, but when I wake up in the morning, my hair is not this full. Again, this is eight day hair, so my hair is much more defined, a little more, a lot more flat. Um, because again, every day 
of my um, wash and go day one or day two, day three, day four, day five, really day five and onward, I really get the volume, which I've come to really, really like. So that's why as much as I probably should wash my hair, I like the fullness because my hair is flat for like the first three, four days. However, um, if you don't like flat hair, I'm starting to get more. I used to be afraid of this thing, this pick. But what I do is on day one, day two, I don't pick anymore, but day one, day two, when I root the flattest hair, I'll take my, my uh, pick here. And I only go on the roots and fluff. Only, so you don't want to do any of this because this is separates the curl and messes up your curl pattern. So you don't want to do, you don't want to put your pick anywhere around this end. So what I'll do is I'll take it in the roots and fluff and, and, and like that. Like that and just pull. And see how already you can kind of see. I mean, it's like instantaneous. So um, I don't need to do it now, but I'm just showing you for the purpose of um, what, how to kind of manipulate your hair with a pick. And that's my wash and go. That is it. And again, eight dollars and seventeen cents, which is actually less because again, I can. This Trader Joe's, oh my gosh, this lasts me for a good three months. This whole bottle lasts me for a good three months. Um. I do burn through one of these every wash, but again, seven, eight cents, who cares? Um, and then this big tub here, again, my daughter and I both use this one, but I'm, I, you know, I'm, I still, this gets us over a month. So maybe two, maybe just shy of two months with both of us with here. And she, I, I wash her hair more frequently than mine. Um, I do hers like every five days, every five, six days. And I do mine like maybe every like eight to 10 um, but there you have it. So I know this is going really, really long. It's 26 minutes right now. But really quickly, I do want to explain to you why I've chosen the products that I've chosen. OK, so the first is I've told you in the very beginning, I wanted inexpensive. I wanted to be able to go into you know, when I travel with my family. We go to Jersey for the summers and I wanted to be able to. Oh, there's a Walmart everywhere. There's a CVS everywhere. There's a Target everywhere. I wanted to be able to go first. Maybe most of all, Walmart, you can find a Walmart in any corner of the country pretty much. So I wanted to be able to, um, you know, if we were traveling and, oh my God, I can't find, you know, this highfalutin salon and that carries this particular brand. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I didn't want to live like that anymore. I wanted to be able to go into Walmart and buy everything that I need at Walmart with the exception of this Trader Joe's thing. So let me just start with the top. Trader Joe's though is not obviously as widely accessible as Walmart. Um, but I'm going to tell you why I love this shampoo. First of all, $3.99, not bad at all. But I really do love the um, nearly all natural ingredients. The main thing, though, is this this shampoo does not contain SLS. SLS stands for sodium lauryl sulfate, which is a, an extremely harsh agent that you'll find in most shampoos. You'll find it in most body washes. It is the ingredient that um, cr that creates a foam in shampoos and, and soaps. So I think you might you find it in your hand soap in your bathroom. Um, I believe there's probably a form of SLS in dishwashing detergent. I mean, that's and, and for sure our laundry detergent. Um, but it's extremely harsh for curls and it's extremely drying for hair. So I don't use anything with SLS. And it's extremely hard to find a drugstore brand um, shampoo with no SLS. I've been meaning to Google that, but it's extremely hard to find that. So for $3.99, I go to Trader Joe's. My husband and I go um, pretty frequently and I'll do like what I call a shampoo run. I'll buy like four or five of these bottles at a time and they last me for months and months on end. Um, but these are really good ingredients in here. So you've got eucalyptus, uh, tea tree leaf, uh, clary sage, um, just really, really good. Now, um, that's why I use this. So that's not negotiable. Again, I can't find it at a, at a, at a, um, at a drugstore, but for three dollars and ninety nine cents, no SLS. And I could, I, you know, Trader Joe's isn't that far from us. But even when I do go, I do stock up. So that's why I've chosen this. I don't use shampoos with SLS. I cannot underscore that enough. OK, so that's number one. Number two. Oh, my gosh. How do I love these? Let me count the ways. VO5. VO5 is so old school that I don't even believe they have an Instagram account. This is what I like to call an unsexy brand. And I, I really I, I don't like to mention brands here, but I have to go out on a limb and just say this. The natural hair game has been a moneymaker for a lot of manufacturers and a lot of brands. You will see brands that come out now that claim to have a brand or a line of exclusively for curly hair and their Instagram feeds are full of these women with gorgeous hair. And it's just 
I'm just going to say it. it. It strikes me as, I don't want to say disingenuous, but it's very, it's marketing. It is just marketing, 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 marketing. And a lot of these products, I got to tell you, um, even though they say they claim to be for natural hair, I wouldn't go near them with a 10 foot pole. I'm going to tell you why. I have found that particularly with my kind of hair, the less I put on my hair, the better. So let me underscore. This and water. This is all I put on my hair. I don't put any oils on my hair. I don't put any butters on my hair. I don't put any hairsprays in my hair. This. This right here. This is this. is this. That is it. So um, a lot of these other brands, you know, they use, like, say, coconut oil or shea butter. And shea butter and coconut oil, at least for me, they coat the hair strand. Coat the hair strand. And you will hear people saying, well, they seal in the moisture. That's why I'm going to use shea butter or coconut oil. I'm going to seal in that moisture. But you could also make the argument that if you're sealing in the moisture, you can also make the argument that it's equally hard to get the moisture in, right? If you're keeping the moisture in, right? If it's not coming out because it has a coating over it, like I used to, I like to use the analogy of if I wrap my arm in saran wrap and then dunked it in a tub of water, is my arm really getting wet? No, that saran wrap is creating a barrier. And that's precisely what shea butter and coconut oil do for my hair. If you find that it works for you, that's great. You can continue to do what works for you. But I'm, I'm telling uh, you this specifically for those of you who are like me, who said, oh, well, I've got to run and get shea butter. I've got to run and get coconut oil. And it, it all it does is create that barrier so that moisture can't get in. Because if I can't get moisture into my hair, my curls are not popping. I'm going to have a frizzy, wet, coated mess on my hands. And it's going to be very hard to get all of that buildup off my hair so that that water and the conditioner can penetrate. So that's why anything with coconut oil, anything with um, shea butter, no bueno for me. But you will find that a lot of these brands, that's like the buzzword, coconut shea, and everyone's just like, oh, I've got to go get it. And then they wonder why sometimes, and again, if it works for you, that's great. But there are a lot of people I know from just, just from experience and just from my personal experience where it did not work for me. But um, I've just found that I think the natural hair market is, um, it's, it's highly um, emotional. And I think that just like with makeup, I mean, we are, especially when we're emotional beings. And if you can somehow channel into that part of our connect to our brain and heart, you know, hair is deeply personal. It's deeply emotional. So I think a lot of these brands, they, um, they, they, they capitalize on that. And so they have these great, and again, I'm not saying that having a good Instagram feed is bad. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to you is a lot of people would look at me like I'm crazy and say, why are you using this cheap 78 cent conditioner with no Instagram feed? And they don't have, a, they, they, this is, this is, you know, my grandmother used to use this, this is back from 1984. Yes, it is. But guess what? Back before there were all these, I'm gonna, I was about to name names. I don't want to do that. Um, but back before there were these these highly coveted, sexy, natural hair brands, they were still curly girls. And I'm telling you what, they will tell you. Um, my hairstylist, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. I'm giving you a shout out um, from There Once Was a Curl. She is brilliant. Melissa is my girl. And Melissa will tell you before there was, you know, all these wonderful, nice, um, even drugstore high brands that cater to curly hair, you had this in Suave. Why? These are silicone free. The, this conditioner, this 78 cent cheapo conditioner does the trick for me. I'm going to turn it around. You look at the ingredients, all good ingredients, all good ingredients. But I know this has been around since the dinosaurs and a lot of people are not impressed by the same packaging that they've had since 1981. But I am telling you, I don't care what this bottle looks like. I care what it does for my hair. And I am telling you what, my hair has never felt or performed better than when I started using this in uh, May of this year. Now, something else I want to say about this conditioner. Um, you've probably heard, if you've kind of been in this natural hair, um, on your natural hair journey for some time now, you may be heard of um, porosity, right? High, medium, low. I really don't know what my porosity is, but I, I do know that it, it is mostly from all what I can gather and the information I can gather. Hair like mine um, tends to not do well with protein. So for a long time, I shied away from this because buried down here, I want to say near in the middle of this ingredients list is soy milk protein, which isn't a real heavy protein. It's really not heavy. But your hair is mostly made of protein, so you have to figure out protein-wise how much you need. You might not need a lot, 
Um, but it's a trial and error thing. But for, for months, I eschewed this. I ran from this because I was like, ah, soy milk protein is going to make my hair break off. That's the only protein in this, okay? I am telling you what, the protein, when I used this, it was like aha aha moment. Like there were like little cherubs singing and playing the harp in the sky when I used this because my curls changed forever. And I really truly believe that it was the milk, so the soy milk protein that gave my curls that plus the moisture and the other stuff that I was doing or not doing or not putting on the hair. It just really gelled. Um the other conditioner, I'll tell you the other two conditioners I like. I didn't bring them here. I should have pictured them, and I will tell you what they are. The conditioner counterpart to the shampoo, the tea tree tingle uh, conditioner, which is really good. And that one has, um, a, this has, th th I think this has a soy protein. It's, um, or the, the conditioner um, um, version of this has a mild protein like this one, which is why probably the conditioner one of this works too. That one is $3.99. This is my favorite. This is probably my second, the, con the, the conditioner, the tea tree tingle conditioner is probably my second. My third favorite conditioner is Suave, Strawberry Suave. Again, like BO5, been around since the dinosaurs. Um, that Suave, however, does not have protein in it. And my hair does good with it. I like it. It's a good, reliable. I probably have about four or five bottles somewhere in the in my cabinet. I do like to alternate. What I like to do, actually, is I'll use this for about a month. And then I'll switch to the conditioner version of this, the tree tea, tree tea tree tingle conditioner for about a month. Then I'll rotate to suave strawberry for about a month. And then I'll start right back up with this one again. So this is my favorite though. Um, but those are the those are the only three conditioners I use. And again, the suave is what a dollar ninety four. Um, and the conditioner version of this one is also three ninety nine. So the tea tree tingle shampoo is three ninety nine. The tea tree tingle uh, conditioner is also $3.99. But again, three very inexpensive um, options here. So, but back to my conditioner. So why do I use this? It's silicone free, no silicone. Silicone um, performs just like shea and coconut, coats that hair shaft. So you're going to need a stronger shampoo than this one. You're going to need a shampoo with SLS to take that off your hair so that the moisture can get in. Too much work for me. I cleanse mostly because I do have um, dandruff and yucky scalp, so that's why I, I shampoo. And also, um, this is not a strong protein, this soy milk protein, but I have heard about whole protein buildup. I don't think I could get it with this, but I'm not taking any chances. So that's why I do wash with every... Um, with every time I do my hair, I, not that there's anything bad with co-washing. I co-wash my daughter's hair, but because of my dandruff in combination with the fact that I do use a conditioner with protein, I don't want protein buildup and I don't want dandruff buildup. So that's why I, uh, shampoo. But again, I do so with a shampoo that is SLS free. So that's, uh, that explains, um, these two. I'm going to go to this one. Again, I told you in the very beginning when I do, when, well, first thing I do when I get in the shower, right? I squeeze that gel out. I would not be able to squeeze that gel out if I used a gel with any kind of shea in it or um, coconut oil, because again, oil and water don't mix. Um, if I used a gel with silicones in it, um, so this is a water what I what they call a water soluble gel. It just comes out with water. So that's why I use this. It gives me nice, good hold. It's um, it's alcohol free. It's silicone free, and it's two dollars ninety four cents. I know I've probably said that five times during this video, but it be it, it bears repeating. Two dollars and ninety four cents. Um, so there you have it, you guys. That is, and I'm so, I'm so sorry. This is approaching forty minutes. Um, but that is my hair regimen, my wash regimen in its entirety. Again, I do it every eight to ten days I probably should do it seven but really I like it and when it gets to be day 10 I have this really big hair and it's kind of frizzy and kind of curly and I just adore it I think it's the bee's knees um anyhow um check out the um description box below this video you will see links to my email if you have any questions my Instagram Facebook and I also have a Facebook a close Facebook group called Courtney Conover's Naturally Curly Love Lounge. I would love for you to join us. Um, just request join. I'll let you in. And it's just a whole bunch of curly women talking about what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Relatively new forum. We started in September and we're, um, we're are growing our family every day. So I'd love for you to be a part of it. Um, again, I 
launched that forum, that closed Facebook group as a way to converse with other curly women about what does and does not work for them. Because again, I'm just bringing my experience to this in my videos because I can only speak from my experience. But I do, I do have a hunch that there are a lot of women out there that were walking the walk that I was when you, you know, you see all these beautiful curly girls on YouTube and a lot of their, their videos are again, the, the hair point of them washing their hair with, with, with sponsored content or uh, um, ads and, and, and products that they were, that they were given, which is great. I love watching it. But at that particular time in my journey, when I was just trying to figure out which end was up, that didn't help at all. It was entertaining and I loved watching it, but I needed to get down to the nitty gritty about why things work, why they did not work, what was I doing wrong. Sometimes I felt like I was just throwing spaghetti on the wall and nothing was sticking. So um, that's what that forum is for. You can come on and if you found something new that worked, if you found something that did not work, share it so that we can all benefit from um, your wisdom and expertise and we can all share. And that's when we um, learn some new stuff, which is always exciting. So again, this is Courtney Conover signing off here. Um, I will be back again with another video from my yoga den. But until then, I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for um, tolerating my coughing and my raspy voice again after laryngitis. So I'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye.